bringing the people behind our food to life. You've actually worked in a supermarket for a short time, didn't you? Yeah, I worked in a supermarket produce department for a good while, and that was a pretty fun time. Uh, it opened my eyes to a lot of practices, but the thing that really bugged me was that there's this, the sell-by date for product, and let's say it's bagged spinach, and the morning of that date, they wanted us to get all the packages off the shelf. So even that the day that you're supposed to sell it by, they really didn't give you that day to sell it. Um, and then just in general, we would have to comb through the, the loose fruit and vegetables and anything that wasn't pristine, they'd want us to get rid of. So there's this kind of aura of perfection around food. And that is something that I think is, is fairly American and fairly wrong in terms of superficiality, where something might not quite look right, but it's perfectly good and because it doesn't look perfect, it becomes trash. Supermarkets have a very real way where they can impact the amount of food that's wasted. Number one, they can compost what they are gonna throw out. Number two, I'd like to see them have a place where they sell some food that they have essentially a sale place for food that might not necessarily be perfect, but is still perfectly edible. And number three, if they're not going to sell it, then there are programs in place where they can donate that food to a food bank or a shelter that will come and pick it up. What happens is a lot of times supermarkets get a bit scared of donating because they're fearful of lawsuits. Um, I found that that's not necessarily a well-founded fear because there's a federal liability shield law the uh, Good Samaritan, the Federal Good Samaritan Act, which protects them from liability if they donate food in good faith. So a lot of times there's ignorance of that law. Other times supermarkets might hide behind that, um, not wanting to donate. The average supermarket sees food waste as a cost of doing business. Um, and that's what happens when you start looking at food as a commodity. Uh, I think that's that, if I could sum up the view of food by supermarkets, it's just that, a commodity. And that's unfortunate, and I think that explains a lot of why you look in a supermarket dumpster and you see all kinds of perfectly good food. The, the saddest thing for me is stuff that gets thrown out because it's ripe. So because it's good right now, where they want it to be not quite ready, so that you can bring it home and it'll be ripe. But so what happens is you go to the supermarket and you need a, a ripe banana or two or maybe an avocado for dinner that's just perfect and they don't have it. You know, they have ones that'll be ripe in four days, which doesn't help. So I don't know, I guess the message is that if you want a ripe avocado, you should go around back and look in the dumpster. I'm reminded of 30 or 40 years ago, I'm thinking back when I was a child, and how I often heard that, it, that being said at the table, uh, finish your food, there's starving people in you know, another country. Yeah, I think we have lost the value of food to some extent. Um, throughout the last 30 years, 40 years even, food has become historically cheap, and with that comes a devaluing. And to a certain extent, that's inevitable. Uh, culturally, there are some institutions in place to help people keep in mind that food is valuable. I like to call those people grandparents, but um, or people who've, who've lived for a while and, and knew times when food wasn't cheap and actually value it and, and treasure it. So I think what we're seeing now with food prices starting to rise is a bit of a return to those values where we'll see food as not just a cheap commodity, but it's something that is grown by someone and should be enjoyed and, and treated well. As people grow their own food, which I think is another growing trend, then they will really value the food even more.